They've been released. We are not talking UNEB and we are not talking UCE or USEE results. It's the Uganda Bureau of Statistics that has released the 2024 preliminary um, census results indicating Uganda's population stands at 45.9 million. That's 45.9 million. The executive director of UBOS, Dr. Ndatira Mkiza, says nearly all Ugandans were counted except a few households that were found closed. There are also reports that Ugandans, some, deliberately refuse to be counted, saying God had already counted them. Now God has counted this story. According to the just concluded census findings, Uganda's population stands at 45,935,046 persons from 11 million households that were reached and 10.84 million counted. On average, every household has an average of 4.4 persons. Of the counted population, females make 23.4 million, which is 51%, with the males standing at 22.5 million, making 49%. The majority of Ugandans are aged between 0 and 17 years, followed by those between the age of 18 and 30, while those aged 60 years and above make just 5%. According to the Executive Director, Uganda Bureau of Statistics, Dr. Chris Mukiza, nearly all Ugandans were counted, commending the public who he says made the exercise easy. Your Excellency, they sent me one thing. And the, this message was very consistent, that you are counting us, but what shall we benefit? Go and tell your government to use this data to improve our livelihood. And so... Having numbers is one thing, but using the numbers to have an impact is another thing. The exercise never came without challenges, including hard to reach areas like islands and mountainous areas and internal border conflicts. According to Boss Executive Director, some people simply refused to be counted. The biggest culprits were religious cults. And these cults are mainly predominant in the Busoga region almost all districts in Busoga. Those of us would say we, can, we are counted by God, we can't be counted and submit to the, to the other people. Crack down on some of them, they arrested them. Some accepted to be enumerated, others completely refused. Now, there are some who want a smaller population, but the president, uh, the Fountain of Honor, has poured cold water on such calls, uh, saying that what is important is to provide services like healthcare and education uh, to the 45.9 million Ugandans. The president was officiating at the release of the 2024 census preliminary results. He urged Ugandans to abandon myths, especially surrounding counting people, saying that these signs has only proved they were totally wrong. The president has now tasked scientists to do research to disapprove some of these myths which he says have continued to negatively affect the Ugandan population and indeed keeping it backward. You go with these foreigners, they tell you lies, you, you follow them right? as if you don't have your own base. So when they were saying population birth control, I don't know what, injections, I don't know what, we said, no, this is not the problem. The problem is, first of all, medical. Have a reliable medical service so that people know that even if you have one child, he will not die unless there is an accident. They should completely get rid of the old, of the old superstitions about Okubarabana, Okubarevintu, counting, counting things, because they used to, to think it, is, it will bring bad luck. It will not. I think the MRM Secretariat should do more work to download science. Even the traditional science, forget about the modern world to our people so that they abandon the superstitions. 
now the results were released and there's a lot that catches the attention of everybody what caught my attention is the idea that about 72 point well seven, almost 73 percent of the population is under 30 and my age group 50 to 60 is almost just only two million people now ramson you were there they were released what caught your attention according to statistics uganda's working age group is 55.6 percent of the entire population but we know the country is faced with high unemployment rate, low tax base. So what we should be looking forward to in the next release is what activities are these Ugandans engaged in? Well, the release today is just part one and the next release will be in September. They should be answering these questions. Are they employed actually or they are not? Are they engaged in informal sector or not? Now, you see, what we're going to do is getting into the nitty-gritty, breaking down the census results by city. And we took about 11 of those. Shall we get in those? Focus will be on Kampala. No surprises for guessing because it's the capital, so the numbers should be very large. And uh, you've got your guide there, taking you back to your geography. The key should be important. Residents, then visitors by day. Now... The residents of Kampala are about 1.87 million. Then the visitors are about 627,340. Let's get to Mbarara as well. About 261,000 and some bit. And th those are the residents. They've got, got about 63,000 visitors by day. Please go visit Mbarara. These numbers are not very good. Gulu City. Um, Guru actually has more day visitors than it does, than Barara does. We'll find out why later. 232,000 go to Masaka. Masaka, Masaka, Masaka. Just 42,000 visiting. Many of those are even going through. Uh, 285,000 Masaka City. Hoima City, 141,000 and, and a bit. Those are day. Um, uh, those are the residents then. Uh, who else? Lira City, Mbale City, and then Jinja City. As uh, Ginger does get a number of visitors during the day, Arua City and uh, Fort Porto, Tourism City, we'll need a few more numbers in there. And uh, those are the visitors uh, we are looking at as well as uh, Soroti City. And uh, let's just bring in uh, Professor Barunua uh, to make sense of these numbers, who is my visitor for the evening. Prof, come in, come in, come in. Prof is with us. Prof, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. If, if I may, given Uganda's uh, population, now we know that at least the figure is about 45.9 million people. Uh, does this give a true reflection of what you expected the Uganda, Ugandan population to be? Oh, oh yes, uh, it does. Uh, good evening, uh, viewers. Um, the, 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 the release of the figures are, I think, a true reflection, though, of course, uh, you would note that the growth rate has decreased. If the growth rate had stayed at about 3.5% per year, uh, possibly would be in the 50 million. But uh, I think uh, I should say, thank God, the, the growth rate is a little bit down. To be of the view that uh, a, a huge population is not a good thing, and the president is on a very different side of that, of that debate. <coughs> what opportunities do we have from being 45.9 million? Well, if you have a huge market, I mean, look at China, the, the growth in China uh, in the last 20 years, lifting 800 million people out of uh, poverty has made China the biggest economy in the world. And I mean, they're able to produce low cost of production. If you have a huge population that is productive, educated and productive, there's nothing wrong with that. But if the population is not educated, like the Ugandan population, you have a problem with you. Uh, Prof, I, 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 was, I was shocked to learn that about 72 and a bit of Ugandans are under 30. It should be even more shocking that half our population is not even 18. Good thing, bad thing. Uh, it, it's a good thing in the sense that the productive population is bigger. That means you have more people working if the jobs exist or if we create the jobs. Uh, the, 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 the disadvantage is that you have a large number of people. For instance, the, the population between uh, 1 and I think 15 
is still much bigger. I think it's about 40 percent. Now that population depends on the rest of the population for their livelihood. So it's important that the country's production capacity and productivity capacity is much higher to be able to feed that big population which is below 14 years old. Uh, but you need a, a big workforce, but th th as you see, the numbers going out of the country because of lack of jobs here is also huge. It's a pointer to something that is happening in the population in, in the country. So and we need to really look at it and say, what exactly is happening here? Where are the jobs? And, and finally, um, for the last 10 years, we've grown just 11 million people. Should we ask the men to do a better job or should we ask them, no, 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 gentlemen, relax, we're not doing very well? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, of course, uh, one thing, people should produce children. Uh, I always say I'm not a very good role model. I have a large number of children. But we should produce children whom we are able to look after. That's very important. Can we take them to school? Uh, at the moment, I have been supporting about 70 children in primary school, you know, paying a little bit of money. Uh, and, and the parents clearly come and tell you, I can't afford 25,000 shillings. And that's a problem. And a, a large number of these, uh, these, these kids, when, when they drop out, like uh, at age 14, they go to produce babies. By the time they are 30, they are grandmothers. That's a big problem in the economy, and we need to watch out for that. Uh, Prof, I've got to tell you, I'm a big fan of your TikTok videos. Keep that TikTok thing going. I think you're doing a very, very good job out there with the Gen Z's. Professor Waswa Balunwa outgoing there.